The government will pump in a rather significant sum into research and development for the proposed third National Cars first prototype. Entrepreneur Development Minister Mohammad Rezwan Yusuf says the allocation will come from the grants approved by Putrajaya. Mohammad Rezwan declined to reveal the quantum of the sum, saying it would be announced by Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad early next year. He did, however, say that it would be quite a large sum, enough to be a catalyst to draw private participation in the special purpose vehicle that will be established as a seed capital to boost the project. Over the weekend, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said that the government would not inject taxpayers' money into the third national car project. However, he explained that the government had no issues providing grants for R&D, as such activities would benefit other players like Proton or DRB Highcom. The third national car project was mooted by Mahathir in June. The ambitious project is set to be launched by 2020. Gamuda says it concurs with PM Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad that the MRT project is too big and too luxurious. This is considering it will only see full ridership after 20 to 30 years. However, Group MD Tato Lin Yun Leng points out that for the underground works, the firm did propose alternative designs to cut costs, but they were rejected by the previous Najib administration. He also highlights that the Putra LRT line took about 20 years to reach a ridership of 250,000 per day, compared with the initial 50,000 riders a day. As for the MRT Sungai Bulo Kajang line, it transports about 130,000 riders per day, still far from the 250,000 needed to break even. On a different note, Lin says Gamuda is considering more overseas projects in order to maintain a CAGR of 15%, a target it has been achieving over the past decade. With the Malaysian landscape looking challenging, Gamuda is now focusing on Singapore, Vietnam and Australia. The country's maiden geothermal plant project, which should have been operational one year ago, is now an abandoned site overgrown with weeds. Announced in 2016 by the then Energy Minister, Dato Sri Dr. Maximus Ongkili, the proposed project is located in Apaskiri in the Sabah town of Tawau. It was being developed by Tawau Green Energy. The plan was for the proposed 37 megawatts facility to sell power to the Sabah electricity grid under the feed-in tariff scheme. However, Ongkili's successor, Yobi Yin, who visited the site, says drilling activities had ceased in 2016 and that there are no employees nor equipment at the site. Putrajaya revoked Tawau Green Energy's permit in August. Tawau Green Energy is said to have been previously controlled by Sipitang MP Yamani Hafez Musa via a 52% stake. Yamani is the son of former Sabah Chief Minister Tan Sri Musa Aman. His whereabouts are currently unknown and he risks losing his seat as he has yet to take his oath of office. The reason for his absence is still a mystery. Sapura Energy and its consortium partner have been awarded a 3 billion ringgit contract by India's Oil and Natural Gas Corp. The job involves engineering, procurement, construction, installation and commissioning works at the central processing platform and living quarters in a block offshore the Godavari Delta. The block covers an area of about 7,300 kilometres of the Krishna Godavari Basin in Andhra Pradesh with water depth ranging between 300 metres to 3,200 metres. Sapura Energy holds a 48.33% stake in the consortium via its wholly owned subsidiary, Sapura Fabrication. This means it is entitled to 1.47 billion ringgit of the contract value. Its consortium partner is India's FCONS Infrastructure. The works are expected to be completed by January 2021. Sapura Energy also reported a narrower quarterly net loss today, down to 31.1 million ringgit from 274.4 million ringgit a year ago. This was on the back of 1.5 billion ringgit in revenue, which improved by some 17% from the previous year. Energy Minister Yo Bi Yin has chided Linus Corp after the rare earth miner said it might take legal action against the government for making its future licenses conditional on removing its radioactive waste from the country. She argues that Linus has no grounds to sue Putrajaya as it is not abusing its power, merely enforcing the law. In 2012, Linus had promised in a letter of undertaking to the Atomic Energy Licensing Board to return all waste generated by its plant to the country of origin. 
Quoting Capital Markets and Investment Group, CLSA, the Australian Financial Review reports that it would cost about 60 million Australian dollars to transport the waste back to Australia. Insurance would cover about 46 million Australian dollars of that.